For more resources, visit rymonline.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Friday show. Uh, Liz, it's been fun catching up with you and uh, getting to ask all these questions. And uh, mm. t- today we're uh, going to be talking about books. Um, and as I've already asked you, uh, you like books. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure you've got a few good ones uh, for us. Uh, and so the question is, what books outside of the Bible have been most influential in your life, as well as what are some books that you're currently reading? Mm-hmm. Um, well, John, thank you for, for these interviews and for the questions. I like to joke that questions are my love language. So uh, <laughs> I've loved chatting with you, but I might also say books are my love language. So <laughs> All this right. Is so a question, a question about books. <laughs> yeah. I love books. Um, <laughs> I could create a fortress of books around me and be quite content um, and spend another hour talking about books. But I'll try to rein it in a little here. All right. We'll cut um, you off if it gets too long. Yeah, I'll trust you to do that and be a good brother to me. <laughs> uh, I'm usually in several books at once, uh, usually some in the counseling realm and some more explicitly theologically oriented. Okay. Um, and right now, uh, I've been working through Embodied Hope by Kelly Capick, which is a theological meditation on suffering. And it, gosh, wow. it is really, I'm sure it meets me where I am because he's similar in being a, a petty theological person. Uh, and he's he's looking at embodiment and the reality of suffering. It's not abstract, but it's feet on the ground. And the way the Lord meets us there is just such a beautiful, beautiful book. Mm. Um, so I would, I'd heartily recommend Embodied Hope. Uh, and um, who released that? Which publisher is that through? Ooh, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> we can we can look it up later, and uh, and then we can add it to the. You said it's Embodied Hope. I'm pulling it's up Amazon now. MVP. It's in our Varsity Press. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, Embodied Hope. Uh-huh. Um, but probably the two two of the heavily heavily influencing men authors would be Henry Nowen for me and Dan Allen, mm-hmm. uh, in addition to C.S. Lewis, but I feel like he's too cliche to even say. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's either him or, t- or Tim Keller. I mean, Tim Keller comes up a lot in our, our circles. So, yeah, um, lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. T- there's too much TK worship out there, yeah. and I'm, I'm one of them, so we'll just lay that aside for the moment. And we'll just go ahead and Repent apologize. He, he's an avid listener to this podcast, so I know he's going <laughs> to be really upset to hear that. But I'm sorry, Tim. Sorry. We'll <laughs> yeah. t- we take it all back. <laughs> we call him um, Timmy, but that's all right. That's awesome. <laughs> all um, right. So, so Henry yeah. Nowen, Dan Allender, C.S. Lewis. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say two of my most given out or gone through books in youth ministry would be Henry Nowen's Life of the Beloved and In the Name of Jesus. Mm. They just, they pack a punch. Um, he's able to, I really wish I would have gotten to know this man. He, he's, when I think of if there is sanctification and becoming more whole in Jesus by and through him, I think people become more human, more accessible. They just feel earthier. This is the impression I got around Scotty Smith when I met him and Joe Novenson. There's just this like warm accessibility, less walls to break down or to get through or that you put up. Hmm. Um, and I, I'm imagining Henry Nowen was like that. He writes with a real um, authenticity and vulnerability and Jesus centeredness that uh, I'm so grateful for. And it's, I can be too wordy and he's able to really succinctly put mm-hmm. some huge truths into words to chew on. Mm-hmm. So I'm grateful for now. And yeah, um, I'm, I'm just now getting introduced to him and mm-hmm. only read one book by him, but <clears throat> he has come up on this podcast a handful of times. Um, and I want to say that there was, might've been John Paul Watson. who said that in the name of Jesus is a book that he reads once a year um, mm-hmm. and just uh, loves that book. So um, I'm definitely going to start uh, picking up more of of now and for sure. Mm. Good, good choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And so what, what are some other ones you got? Yeah. Um, Dan Allinger and he's, he's the counselor who, um, his integration of psychology and theology has impacted me pretty deeply. Um, so his book to be told, to be told Mm -hmm. is a part of what the Lord used to even get me to counseling school. Wow. I can remember thinking when I read it, if I could ever learn about, uh, the gospel in a capacity other than youth ministry. So other and not in that paradigm, but in another paradigm, it wanted to be the gospel. Like he understands it in counseling, uh, the way he understands narrative and story and the Lord's story and where it intersects with ours and helping people to discover that is phenomenal. Um, so and his writing isn't for everyone. He can be really hyperbolic. He's a really intense man, really passionate man. Uh, so some people can be kind of turned off by it, but it was, it has been a very huge blessing to me. He does some pretty profound work. Um, yeah. So he and yeah, go ahead. No, I was just that, that's definitely a name that comes up a lot is is Dan Allender. I mean, he's definitely had a big impact on on a lot uh, with his work. Um, mm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm also a fan. Chuck DeGroat wrote Leaving Egypt and um, some newer books called Wholeheartedness and. Um, a book about loving hard people and Chuck's got a lot of wisdom and also integrates psychology and theology pretty well. Um, he, I respect him a lot and he, uh, I think in wholeheartedness, there's so much wisdom in there and I wish it was more explicitly Jesus centered because knowing Chuck and knowing his theology, I know that he's coming from a reformed and like very Jesus centric cross centric place but it doesn't explicitly say that enough so i mm. kind of was left wanting more even though it's brilliant books very helpful mm. um, but leaving egypt I man in terms of story again and helping kids and it's a great book to go f- with kind of your summer intern to mm. get to know themselves a little bit better and how god's created them it's a really great book yeah um, and so are those uh let's see these were the ones that you're you're reading currently is that what you said so um <laughs> Those are past books. Currently would be some other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just showing that. Um, but no, it is. I'm, but I agree with you. Like you said, it'd be, well, when you said you, you have multiple books open at the same time or you're going yeah. through multiple. That's something I first picked up from uh, Tony Reinke's book, Lit. Mm. Um, and just giving the advice of, you know, he, he said at different times of the day, he could read or focus differently on certain types of books. And, mm-hmm. you know, he says the headier theological ones when he's got a lot of coffee early in the morning, that's when he, he reads those and <laughs> he gets kind of biography later in the day. But I think they're, to me, I've found it that having multiple books open helps me get through more books. Um, mm-hmm. actually, instead of just having one and focusing on one. Um, mm-hmm. so anyway, all that to say, I, I agree with that approach and I think it's wisdom. So, I, I don't know if it's by choice, John. It's, it's what my life has become in terms of seeing clients and counseling and teaching the church and other other things. But I don't mind it. I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, what are some of those that you're currently in right now? Um, okay, I'm I'm starting "Love Thy Body" by Nancy Piercy. Um, I just picked that up today. And did you really? Yeah, and so I'm I'm in chapter one. It seems phenomenal. Nice. Yeah, I think she's doing a pretty great cultural exegesis on where we're coming from in relation to the body, even in a mis- misunderstanding of the body. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to to keep going in that. Um, yeah, and building off of uh, Francis Schaeffer, too, that you can't really go wrong there. <laughs> uh-uh, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that one as well. Yeah, and I have to throw in... If I had to choose like three more recent favorites, and by more recent, the last ten years, let's be honest. But yeah, that's, that's um, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, a praying life by Paul Miller is uh, one of my absolute favorites of all time. I, I can't. Every time I revisit it, I'm like, how have I forgotten this? I need to revisit it annually. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. that he's just such a dear man, and it it puts the authority of our lives back where it should be. Praying and and orients us back to how we're meant to, to live and direct our days. So I'm, mm-hmm. I love that book. And obviously when you, whenever you bring up somebody's prayer life, um, guilt and shame can come up quite mm-hmm. easily, but he, he talks about that in such a way. It's just a very encouraging, comforting. I mean, it makes you want to pray better. That's right. You know, and, and more intimately with the father. 
Um, so yeah, just echoing that it's a phenomenal book. Right. It doesn't become an imperative. Mm. Somehow he, he's able to avoid the, the fault we all make and saying like, we'll go pray more you know, like just <laughs> exactly. versus describing it as the beautiful life giving soul feeding activity gift God has given us. Right. Like this, but we get to communicate with him and interact with him and, mm. Ah, uh, yeah. Paul paints it really well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's something I'm actually just picking up. Um, Michael Reeves, "Enjoy Your Prayer Life," mm. um, and I've, it's a tiny little booklet. Um, but somebody recommended that to me, and Paul Miller, you know, writes the little um, endorsement I think on the front. So, uh, anyway, looking forward to getting into that as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. My other one, another go-to, I'm a big Brene Brown fan because of her research on shame that I think has done so much cultural good and helping us become aware of what it is. But Kurt Thompson writes a book called The Soul of Shame that, mm. again, is an integrated book. And um, I really, really appreciate what he says in there and how he teaches about shame that's also within the Christian context and understanding. So soul of shame, we had a small group in my church do that, not in high school, but an, an older a group of folks go through soul of shame together this semester that uh, I just, it broke down some incredible barriers and knit that small group together in some new and beautiful and deep ways. Wow. So I definitely recommend that book. Excellent. I hadn't heard of that one. And who'd you say the author was again? Kurt Thompson, C-U-R-T and Thompson. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. All right. You got any more? Uh, you know, <laughs> well, I'll give you one more before this just gets preposterous. Okay. But... All right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I really have appreciated um, James Smith, Jamie Smith's books, and You Are What You Love, I think is a, hey, we're really formed by what we what we love, what we desire, what we move toward our affections, and we're ruled by them if we're not aware of and honor the reality of paying attention to what, what those things are. So his, his words on formation, how we're formed, and worship, and... Um, Paying attention to, especially culturally, what we're formed by, I think that's super insightful and really, really helpful. Mm. So I would, I would check out "You Are What You Love" if you haven't by James K. A. Smith. Yeah, I know that's been brought up on this podcast once before, and I've got it on my to-read list, and I haven't, haven't gotten around to it yet, but I've heard a, a lot, and um, I know uh, Walt Mueller had a podcast with him on it that was very interesting as well. Nice. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's one I definitely want to pick up. Well, Liz, um, I really appreciate you uh, taking out the time to talk with us and uh, share, pass on wisdom and experience in ministry with others. Uh, so thanks for taking the time with us. Mm, it's been a privilege. Thanks so much for having me, John. Absolutely. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to The Local Youth Worker. As always, we hope you've been encouraged and equipped in your call as youth workers. If you take time to rate this podcast on iTunes, it would greatly help us. As always, we want to thank Joe Deegan for providing the music and encourage you to go out and purchase his newest CD, Cover and Title Page, which you can find at iTunes. See you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Oh, come and buy without money. Oh, come and feast without pain.